Well, today we are going to try to eat Warhead's Extreme Sour. It's the yellow one. It's too sour. It's too sour. It's not that bad. What is going on guys? So today we're back with another... Blah, blah, blah. Wrong video. What is going on guys? So today we are back with another deep dive and today we're actually going to be going over... I mean, in all honesty, he's literally a sex icon. I mean, what more could you really say? We're going over Lickitung, who is a pure normal type Pokemon maxing out at 1411. That does actually mean you need 15 on attack, 15 defense, and 15 stamina at level 40 to max out this big pink boy. 1411 is a crazy close CP to 1500, and being so we max out underneath that is quite good. What that actually does mean in the Ferocious Cup though, is if we compare bulk and stat product up against every other possible participant, we do have second in bulk and ninth in stat product, which is very respectable. Now all of this does come from our base stats of course with a 108 on attack, 137 on defense, and 207 on stamina. It just keeps getting better and better there. So for what it's worth a lot of people were asking me to also take a look into Licky Licky. For what it's worth I will go ahead and tell you that stats are quite similar um, of course because we do actually get a stat increase. We do actually have a different IV spread. I didn't write any of that down but I can tell you that Licky Licky does not perform anywhere close to Ligatung, okay? I will mention Licky Licky again when we get into the shield scenarios, but just for my sake and your sake, let's just say that Licky... God. Let's just say that Licky Licky is nowhere close to the performance that Ligatung is going to get you. I definitely think that if you plan on running either of them, you should be expected to just kind of spend some dust on Lickitung because the performance is nowhere close. Now let's actually take a look at our moves. We actually have a pretty concise move set here. We only have two fast moves here, Lick and Zen Headbutt. Lick coming in for three energy per turn, we do get three damage per turn. Zen Headbutt for two energy per turn, we do get 2.66. So, I mean, right then and there, it's pretty simple that Lick is just going to be way better. Uh, Hyper Beam in terms of charge move is pretty decent. That's a pretty steep energy cost, but we also do have Stomp and Power Whip, which do sound a lot better to me. But for what it's worth, Hyper Beam for 80 energy, we get 150 damage at a 180 after stab. We do get a 1.88 on the damage per energy ratio, but it does get bumped up to 2.25 after stab as well. So Hyper Beam is definitely that move where like, it's just gonna pack a ton of punch right out of the gate. It's gonna do a ton of damage, but it does cost a fair bit to get to it and to actually use it. So you gotta kinda keep that in mind. Now Stomp is a little bit more digestible. 40 energy for 50 damage at a 1.38. It does get boosted to 66 on the damage for a 1.65 on the damage per energy ratio after stab. That one's a lot more manageable, only 40 energy, so literally half the cost, but it's for just a tad bit over a third of the damage. So it's not quite as good like in terms of the efficiency, but it's still like pretty fast and that's kind of a good thing. And then Power Whip, lastly for 50 energy, we get 90 damage at a 1.8, which of course is gonna be great for us. And I mean, there's no stab benefit here, but it's still just one of those moves that's kind of really solid in its own right. It does really well in a ton of scenarios inside of this cup alone. And I mean, it's been proven on other Pokemon that Power Whip can really put in some work. Now, out of all of the possible move combinations that we do have, I would say that Lick, Stomp, and Power Whip do tend to perform the best. Uh, for what it's worth, I do see a lot of people you know, leaning more towards Hyper Beam, uh, but I, I, I mean, it really depends on how you want to run your Lickitung here. I personally feel like Stomp and Power Whip, while it does actually perform better, it makes it a lot more consistent in a lot of scenarios. It just makes it so much more consistent to have those lower powered moves and you can kind of bait a little bit because the two moves are kind of close in energy. It does make it a little bit interesting in some scenarios, but 
I do also understand the hyper beam argument there because you do kind of sometimes want that move that just is going to finish the Pokemon off if you only have like a tiny bit of health left but you've got enough energy to fire it off. Might as well just do a last ditch effort and just kind of give everything you've got. So I do see merits to both sides here but personally for me I, I would feel more comfortable suggesting to people that Lick, Stomp, and Power Whip would be the more consistent move set. So we're actually going to stick with that and moving into our shield scenarios here first up into the entire cup in the zero versus zero shield scenario We actually end up with a 47.9 percent moving into the two versus zero We have a 97.9 which is just amazing zero versus two is a 3.1 So quite low unfortunately the 2v2 is actually a 65.6 though So straight away there are some noticeable numbers here uh, the 2v2 having a 65 percent is great at least the 50 percent is what I kind of you know push for there the zero versus zero unfortunately doesn't quite hit that but it is really close for what it's worth the two versus zero is really high with a 97.9 which is always good and in the zero versus two I do like to see at least a 10% we only end up with a 3% though so we are kind of lacking uh, when the opponent has more shields than us it just kind of gives us an awkward spot to be in Next, moving on to the meta, we do actually start in the zero versus zero with a 30.4%. The one versus zero is actually gonna be a clean 87%. The zero versus one is actually uh, awkwardly an 8.7%. I was afraid I was gonna say that wrong. And lastly, the 1v1 is a 47.8. So unfortunately, what I was really looking for here is that zero versus zero or the one versus one to at least be 50, but neither of them actually hit that. The zero versus one, like we said for the entire cup, would be nice if it did hit a 10% but unfortunately it doesn't but the one versus zero is still pretty solid with an 87 percent i'm not too worried about that so our numbers are like right there like next to what i would consider like the the one of the better possible scenarios but it just falls just barely short unfortunately so I told you that I would bring up Leaky Leaky again here. In the meta scenario, if you were going up against the meta, it doesn't actually matter which moveset you go with for Leaky Leaky. I could not find a moveset combination that outperforms 4.3% wins in that one versus one up against the entire meta. Make sure you understand this, 4.3% wins. That means you were basically winning up against one Pokemon with Licky Licky in the even shield scenario inside the meta. So you would actually have to have like shield dominance over your opponent almost every single scenario you run with Licky Licky to actually have an advantageous Pokemon on your side. It just doesn't make any sense to run Licky Licky for me. If for whatever reason he's a fan favorite of yours, whatever, that's that's completely on you. But I would not recommend if you are trying to do good in a tournament to actually run Licky Licky. Lickitung, if you want to run either of them, is definitely the way to go. So now let's actually tear down that 1v1 shield scenario with Lickitung. We are moving back to that. Uh, the 47.8%, if you remember, is what we had. So let's actually tear down our wins and losses out of this. So the Pokemon that we actually win against are Alolan Marowak, Donphan with Charm, Aggron, Pillowswine, Leron, Granbull, Vaporeon, Suicune, Linoon, Nidoking, and Raichu. You. So you might be hearing some unusual names. We haven't really talked about some of these Pokemon before and that is because PB Pokey did kind of shift their meta around just a little bit. We did lose a few Pokemon. We did gain a few Pokemon. Aggron is a new addition. Lightning is a new addition. We don't no longer run Furret inside the meta and I haven't like compared them side by side as of this recording. So there's a little bit of changes, but I think it's all around way more solid and way more consistent in why the Pokemon are inside the meta. Next, in terms of our losses, though, this is where it kind of gets interesting. We do have a tie up against Zonfan with Counter for what it's worth. Alolan Ninetales is a flat out loss, though. Minin, Alolan Sandslash, Babarel, Lickitung itself. Interesting, we'll come back to that. Nidoqueen, Queen, Shellgun, Skuntank, Umbreon, Delcaddy, and Alolan Raticate. So the Lickitung situation is quite awkward because PV Pokey does prefer that Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam can actually put you in an advantageous situation if you run into the mirror. The problem is that you do actually drop a couple of matches if you run that moveset versus the moveset that I'm proposing here. It does make it more consistent outside of the mirror, but whichever side of the fence you fall on, I'm that's okay. For me personally though, I definitely would recommend Stomp and Power It because it does gain a couple more of those matchups but we do end up losing in the mirror. Uh, some other notable Pokemon, it just 
mainly these are pretty much easy once you really think about. We do have a ghost type fast move. And unfortunately with a ghost type fast move, we do run into some problems with things like Lickitung, uh, but mainly like the barrel, Umbreon, Delcaddy, Skuntank. We do kind of run into some interesting matchups here where we just kind of end up falling behind right out of the gate. So let's actually move straight into the ripe and rotten section because we can kind of figure out, even though we have some of those harder losses, let's try to pick through those and figure out what's a good partner Pokemon to pair with Lickitung to help us actually cover some of our shortcomings in terms of the meta. So like I just talked about, Umbreon and Alolan Raticate, mainly it's just kind of the dark types in general. We do have a huge problem with them. Uh, Umbreon and Alolan Raticate could easily be countered by a fighting type Type moves though, like Donphan with Counter. Skuntank is a little bit more awkward. We do kind of need some more ground type coverage, which Donphan with Counter can work. Um, it it kind of covers multiple sections here, which I like, but it can be kind of slow getting to the ground type moves. So possibly could be worth running something like Nidoqueen or I guess Nidoking. Nidoqueen seems like the best fit for me personally, but something that can get to a ground type move quite quickly to help overcome that Skun Tank wall with literally only one weakness that you could run into. Not necessarily going to be a bad thing if you run Donphan or anything like that. Donphan helps cover more base Bases, but kind of is going to be slower to the Skun Tank. But uh, Nitto Queen is going to be quicker for the Skun Tank, but probably not nearly as good up against the other bases. So kind of pick your poison there. Next, we also do have a big problem with Nitto Queen in general, and I think that's just kind of because we don't have a ton of ways to get through a ton of the bulk that she actually carries. Uh, Power Whip can actually do a little bit of damage, but not too much, and Stomp and Lick are just kind of like, eh, to begin with. But one of the easier routes you can take to get over Nidoqueen, though, is basically just running a Water-type Pokemon. Uh, Suicune, Vaporeon definitely work well here, uh, just to name two. I mean, you could run the barrel, I guess. Either way, uh, a Water-type Pokemon to pair with Ligatung would actually help cover a ton of that. Um, and then last, we do have Alolan Ninetales and Alolan Sandslash. So both of those actually carry an ice type, which makes it kind of easier to kind of think about, well, what if we run a fire type Pokemon? Alolan Marowak makes a lot of sense here because you can actually help take out a lot of the ice types that you'll encounter. Uh, a notable Pokemon that I don't see, oh, Pillow Swine is still in the meta, okay, good. Uh, but basically an Ice type Pokemon is gonna have a ton of trouble with any type of fire move, especially along the Sand Slash, considering it's gonna have a super duper weakness to the fire type moves there. So those are kind of some definite good pairings that I could see to help cover a lot of the problems that you have inside of the losses. Shelgon is actually only the weird one that I seem to have trouble finding good counters for, uh, but I guess maybe like a fairy type like a Lolan Ninetales or Gramble would be okay, but I mean, it's just kind of okay. So that's actually going to be it for Lickitung today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is going to be our second to last deep dive for the Ferocious Cup. Yeah, so on Sunday the 17th, I think is what it's going to be. Let me double check. I'm going to hold this voice until it pops up. Yeah, the 17th is actually going to be the date that we're supposed to receive the new cup announcement. It is exactly two weeks away from the first, so we should be getting that before the end of this calendar week, technically. Um, Either way though, we are going to have one more uh, deep dive. I'm actually going to literally record it as soon as I stop recording this. But uh, that's that's basically a wrap on the Ferocious Cup, which it's been a very interesting cup to say the least. A whitelist cup is very interesting. I think that's probably where most of the situations are going to end up going, unfortunately, if you don't like the whitelist idea. Um, I, I honestly, I mean, they're only going to be able to make certain metas work with pairs of typings for so long. There's going to have to be a whitelist in effect at some point, unfortunately. So I guess, you know, we just kind of take what we can get and kind of just roll with it. But 
Either way, that is actually going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for watching. As always, remember to join the Discord if you haven't. Uh, if you want to join for the next deep dive, uh, which I'm going to literally record after this. If you want to join because you're excited for the next cup and you want to vote for deep dives in that cup, join the Discord down in the description below and get inside to do some voting. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead and head out and see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, always remember that if you like to like videos, you could do that. But if you don't, you could be that guy. Otherwise, uh, let me know what you have to say down in the comments below about the video. I do highly appreciate you guys watching. If you guys want to support me in any way, there are several links down in the description for Patreon, uh, joining the community here on YouTube, or even just directly PayPal if that's your thing. I greatly appreciate everyone's name that's on screen as you guys have showed some sort of support outside of just viewing the videos. And I thank you guys, you, you don't understand from the bottom of my heart. So until our next video guys, I will catch you then.